Okay, we're now recording. Perfect. Um, welcome everyone to this meeting of the planning committee held on Tuesday, the 7th of December at 7.30 p.m. Uh, we're holding this via a video link because of power issues in town hall. Um, so I will now move on to the uh, first item, which is apologies for absence. Have we had any apologies, Heather? We have not. Um, I'm expecting two further councillors to attend at some point, but I have not received any apologies to date. Thank you very much. Uh, have any councillors got any declarations of interest? I can't see ev everyone, so if you have, just shout at me. And uh... <laughs> Of those visible on my screen, no one has um, indicated that they have. OK, perfect. Um, OK, item three, minutes of the meeting of the planning committee held on the 23rd of November 2021. Um, are we happy to take those as a true record? All in favour? OK, they will obviously be formally signed at the uh, next meeting that's held in person. Thank you. Uh, have we received any public questions in accordance with standing orders 22 and 23? Uh, no, none have been received, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, have we received? Uh, have we received? Oh, I can hear myself. Um, can can people go on mute if they're not speaking? Sorry. Um, can, can, can you hear me? Yes, can hear you, Councillor Paul. Can I put my declaration of interest in then? Yep. Yes, please do. I will. I'll vote it out. Whilst normal town council district council disclosures would have worked, taken legal advice. I need to declare personal pecuniary interest as living too close to the site and I can't speak or vote on a matter. That advice came from legal at St Albans District Council. So I shall I shall leave a room technically. That's for Did item you... eight, isn't it, Bert? Pardon? That's for item eight, isn't it? Yeah. The... Yeah. yeah. You've gone past that stage on the agenda. I've come, I've only just come back in. No worries. Um where where have I gotten to? Because I've I've lost so, my thread. That's okay. You'd asked about the public questions that have been received, and I confirmed that none have been received. Thank you very much. Uh, letters of objection. Now I know that councillors have received a number of letters of objection since this agenda was published, um, in in relation to um, item eight on the agenda. Um, have we received any other letters of objection, Heather? No, none have been received. Thank you. So we we um, we just note that we've received um, letters of objection that we'll consider those um, during item eight when the um, the, the relevant item. Um, speaking of, because we have members of the public present, I will take item eight ahead of uh, item six. Um, so I now move to the pre-planning consultation from CK Hutchinson Networks UK Limited, Luton Road, Harpenden. Um, Heather, I'll ask you to give any comments on this one first, and then I'll ask our member of the public to speak for um, up to three minutes. Yes, of course. So in a sense, really, that due to this being a pre-application um, and um, it not sort of going through the usual process, I haven't actually put together any sort of kind of comments as such. Um, I've made a short list of the, um, the ball the bullet points that have been raised in the various letters of objection, but I feel that Mr. Um, Mabley may be covering those in actually in his speech. But what I have done is prepared a little short um, uh, uh, street views and additional uh, documents to help support what Mr. Mabley is saying, just to help to sort of set the scene as it were. So I'll um, just share the screen for that. If you can just bear with me just a second. And then once that's visible on the screen, Mr. Mabley, if you want to um, to commence your uh, your speech, you have three minutes to address the committee. OK, when you're ready. OK, thank you. Um, local residents have raised three main areas of objection. Firstly, the proposed, proposed development will have a detrimental impact on the character and appearance of a conservation area, in particular being placed a few metres away from a locally listed building. The conservation area includes a number of Victorian houses running from 60 to 82 Luton Road. It also includes a former railway bridge, which is a locally listed building. The Nicky Line Bridge is described in the Council's conservation area character statement as a monumental brick arch, which is a major local landmark acting as an archway at the entrance to the central part of town. 
The proposed site is just eight metres from conservation area buildings and only three metres away from a locally listed building. The mast and associated equipment would be in stark contrast to the adjacent Victorian buildings and the 150-year-old locally listed bridge. It would dominate and visually harm the appearance of the existing street scene, which serves as a distinctive part of the history and character of this area. St Albans.gov says, development which would adversely affect the setting of an historic feature will be refused. There is the precedent of advertising boards being removed as they were detrimental to street scene from the proposed mass site, and long views are particularly important. Secondly, the proposed development would increase the risk to pedestrians and impede the safety of passing road users at the junction of Hollybush Lane and Luton Road. The proposed site is at a junction which many people, including a lot of school children, cross both Hollybush Lane and the Luton Road. The large cabinets and mast will create an obstruction to drivers and therefore reduce visibility, increasing the possibility of a collision with a pedestrian. Hollybush Lane is a one-way street at this juncture, and unfortunately, many cars come down Hollybush Lane the wrong way. With these cabinets, drivers turning left into Hollybush Lane will be less likely to see these cars coming the wrong way and increasing the likelihood of a road traffic accident. Thirdly, the development could have a detrimental impact on the health of local people, including nearby nursery children and the local wildlife, including the bat population. Of particular concern is that the proposed site is only 140 metres from a large nursery school for children aged six months to five years old. In summary, this pre-planning application has been very badly researched. The applicant refers to extensive research. However, to date, there has been a lack of consultation with residents, a lack of notice, a lack of respect for local heritage and a lack of respect for the safety of pedestrians and drivers. They have not even notified the local residents of their plans, and this is a clear breach of duty based on the mobile network operator's own code of practice. So please reject this application. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mabley. Um, OK, at this point, I can't see anyone, so I'll open the floor to councillors. But um, Heather, if you can see people, could you let me know who's waving? I can indeed. Um, so I've got Councillor Drake, I believe, that would like to speak. Councillor Drake. Uh, thank you. So I'm just working my way around teams. Um, thank you. I, I agree with uh, Mr. Mabley's first two points in particular, having revisited the, the, the site to have a look. It would seriously damage, in my view, the local conservation area and the entry into Harpenden. It, it would have severe adverse impacts on that and the whole purpose of a conservation area. The second uh, 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 point is that the mass would unquestionably obscure the junction uh, that Mr. Maverley referred to with Hollybush Lane um, uh, uh, and must cause uh, questions for certainly for highways in this application. Um, I'm not able to comment at all, of course, on the comments made upon the, the health situation. I'm not qualified to do that. Um, because obviously some of these masks are dotted around around the country. Um, but in, in, in total, I think we should have some serious um, concerns about this proposal um, and certainly the level of consultation undertaken um, in, 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 in relation to it. Um, I don't think at this stage we're in a position, Mr Chairman, to, to say we accept or reject because we haven't actually got an application in front of us but there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to express concerns about it. Uh, thank you, Councillor Drake. I understand it's um, about whether or not we object, so it's it's a object or not object, yeah. as it were. Um, Councillor Farmer, I believe, would like to speak. Councillor Farmer. Yes, thank you. I did manage to remember to unmute myself. Yes, I, I mean, I think we should be stronger than just expressing concern because I, I, ha I happened to be driving down that way yesterday um, heading north out of town and then back and as I went past I looked and thought what is proposed and the site proposed is totally out of keeping both with a conservation area and with listed structures and I don't I can't comment on how to what extent um, the applicant has considered that I mean they're not they're not obviously they're not local they're based in Yorkshire so um, 
I don't know, but it is total. I love you. It is a totally inappropriate location, both because of the effect on that part of the town and iconic buildings, and as has been noted, because of the traffic issues, because that is a very, very tricky junction. Um, and the road narrows there, and it's not a good place to put a structure. So I, my view is that we should be expressing the view strongly that it is not the right location. Thank you, Councillor Farmer. Uh, any other councillors? Councillor Turnbull, I believe, would like to speak. Councillor Turnbull. Thank, thanks, Chair. I, mean, I support exactly what's been said by the previous speaker, but more than that, my reaction is it's absolutely daft. I mean, it, it's stupid. It's not just <laughs> objectionable on lots of technical grounds or, or whatever. It is absolutely stupid to even contemplate putting a, a, a mass that size and all these all these containers that close to the road and the pavement. I mean, my reaction is should just be object uh, rejected out of hand, full stop. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Turnbull. Any other councillors want to speak on this one? <clears throat> no, not that I can see. OK, so I mean, I, I agree with the comments that have been made by um, the, the three councillors that have spoken. I think this is clearly a pro. Uh, sorry, I can't speak tonight. Clearly, a proposal that is out of keeping with the area that they want to put it in. Um, so I think we should be going for a recommendation that we strongly object, which I think is the, the strongest we can go, given that it's not a, an actual application that's been brought to us. Um, the town clerk has uh, provided a recommendation based on um, if we wanted to object, he's provided a recommendation based on the points that have been raised. Heather, would you mind reading it out? Because I can't get it up on my screen for some reason. Of course. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I have can actually sort of share the screen to put it in front of everybody um, and I'll happily read through that. Thank you. That would be very, very appreciated. OK, so this is the statement here that um, the town clerk has prepared based on sort of the concerns that generally were being sort of shared with us by the residents. So the town council has significant concerns regarding the location of this 5G telecommunications installation and based on the information available during the pre-consultation strongly objects to this proposal. We cannot provide a response based on planning policy without sight of the various documents and impact assessments that would be required for full planning application. We have have, however set out initial views and will revisit our position once we are, have considered fully the accompanying documents of any future planning application. The objection at this stage relates to a number of concerns. These concerns include potential inappropriate development in the conservation area, negative impact on residential properties in close proximity to the proposed location, the scale of the mast itself and volume of accompanying street furniture, negative impact on trees and wildlife that are adjacent to the proposed location, visibility and safety issues for vehicles and pedestrians crossing the road in that area, potential increase in flood risk due to the loss of the existing verge, and conflicts with guidance uh, material as the location is on low ground and appears to be obstructed. The Town Council welcomes the pre-application consultation on the proposed 5G telecommunications installation and encourages all other potential future applicants for this type of development to encourage with sorry to engage with the town council in advance of formal planning applications thank you heather um that essentially is our statement that's been prepared assuming we go with that can we correct the typo from food to flood yeah um, <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> might that, be a food risk but i think a flood risk sounds pretty <laughs> of course Thank you. Um, do any comment? Uh, sorry, do any councillors have any comments uh, or anything they'd like to add to that uh, recommendation? I can't see any of the ones on my screen. Uh, it, any councillors not on my screen waving at me, Heather? No, everyone is staying quite still. Perfect. So I'll take that then as being that they are in agreement with the um, prepared statement. I will just get a vote just to be 100 percent sure. So all in favour of going with that recommendation? Yes, that's unanimous, Chair. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, th thank you, uh, Mr. Matt. Uh, sorry, I, I've forgotten your name. Was it Mattonley? It's Mr. Mabberley. Mabberley, sorry. Mabberley, yeah. I, yeah. I, I lost you off my screen, so I, I do no, apologise for that. 
Um, you're welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting, but I suspect you might have better things to be doing with your uh, with your evening. So uh, you're also welcome to leave us at this juncture. Um, okay, I'll, I'll leave you to it. Thank you very much for your help. Thank you. Have a good evening, sir. Thanks Thank you. again. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, right. So back to the start, as it were. Yes. Right. Just let me scroll back through. Right, yes. Uh, item six, applications registered week ending 19th uh, and 26th of November 2021, starting on page number 13, I think. Yes, page hey, number 13. Office. Okay, so page 13 is quite a simple one. Uh, 5 2021, 3161, 3164, 3152 and 3176 all do not meet the criteria required for consideration. So we start on 5 2021, 3177 at 4 Camberley Place. Okay. Your observations on this one, Heather. Of course. So what I'll do, um, councillors, is that I will read out my observations and then I will move to the screen um, views that um, have been shared with you in advance. OK, so office observations. The proposal is to replace existing side conservatory with a brick built structure at ground and first floor level. The extension does not extend any further forwards or rearwards than the existing footprint of the house or beyond the footprint of the demolished conservatory. An additional bedroom is included at first floor level, totaling four in the dwelling. The plot is in the corner of the cul-de-sac, creating no detrimental impact on neighbouring properties. No overlooking from or on other properties in the area. No tree works are proposed. A garage and two off-street parking spaces are provided. I have said consider no objection. So I'll share with you the um, street seats. I should just go back to the very start here. OK, so this is the um, said property. And then you can see here that just if I do the slideshow, it probably might make it a little bit easier for you to see. So you can see here that it's quite a substantial sort of corner plot at the end of the cul-de-sac with very little um, impact on the surrounding neighbours. This is the conservatory to the side that is to be demolished um, and then these images here show the um, existing on the the two left hand images to the proposed on the two right hand images so you can see essentially the conservatory is going to the left and being replaced with a um, full height extension to create additional accommodation downstairs and a bedroom at first floor level and then this is the um, rear elevations here that you can see um, the extension over to the side where the conservatory is and then the slight addition of the block to the right hand side elevation to the rear. And that essentially is it for Camberley Place. Thank you, Heather. Any comments from councillors on this one? I can't see. No, they're all nodding. Um, in that case, <laughs> in that case, uh, are we happy to go with the recommendation to set out all in favour? Yes, all agreed. Perfect. Uh, 5 2021 3185 and 3186 both don't meet the criteria required for consideration. So on to 5 2021 3217 at 23 Wayborn Close. Your observations on this one, Heather. OK, I'll just actually try and speak to the images if I can. So 23 Wayborn Close. The property is the end of a row of terraced houses and is set back from the neighbouring properties. Um, so it's from the neighbouring row of terraced houses with a flat roof side element, which is a converted garage. Um, between them, therefore reducing the possible impact from the change in roof form. The proposal is to gable the roof form with a rear dormer window um, to add an additional bedroom in the roof space to total four in the dwelling. There's an addition of three Velux windows to the frontage and a lantern roof light added to the existing flat roof ex ground floor element. Two off street parking spaces are provided, no tree works. Um, so you can see here in this image that I'm sharing that there's a, um, a change to the roof form just here. 
no sort of no other sort of major changes to the frontage and then you can see here at the side that we've got this rear dormer window um, at the back and the little small lantern window that's going above the um, flat roof extension and then this is a image of the rear so you can see there's the dormer window that's been added at the back um, and then the change to the roof form here um, to accommodate that change and that is it. Thank you Heather any comments from councillors on this one? I can't see any. Any from the people I can't see? No, nobody's is moved. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, in that case, are we mind to go with the recommendation is set out? All in favour? Yes, agreed. Perfect. On to 5 2021 3165 at 18 Grasmere Avenue. Your observations on this one, Heather? Okay, so um, proposal is to change the form and it increase the height of the roof to create accommodation in the roof space. Extensions are proposed to the rear of the property at ground floor level with internal reconfiguration and changes are also proposed at the first floor level by the slight reduction in depth of the rear projection, but the addition of a small element above the existing ground floor element. Total of five bedrooms are proposed. The street is made up of a variety of styles and height properties. Roof height is increasing by one metre to be nine metres not conservation area, ample parking provision in the garage and to the frontage, no tree works are proposed. As you can see here the, um, the street scene of the existing property. Um, and then here we have the images that show the existing along the top here, and then the proposed lower down. So they are actually changing the roof form quite dramatically, but in a sense, actually, although they're going higher, they are nipping it in to be less um, intrusive and less dominant in the street scene. Um, and then we've got these changes to the side um, ground floor elements with the addition at the back here of um, these sort of kind of rear projections. So you can hear, see here the existing footprint of the ground floor elements and then the proposed rear um, elements here at ground floor level. Sorry, somebody's emailing me. Um, and then this is the um, existing first floor and the second floor. Um, this is the existing and the proposed um, first floor and then the roof elevation um, element that's being added just there. So you can see that they're actually reducing the depth at the back, um, but stretching across and then they're building in the roof space. Okay, and I'd say consider no objection. Thank you. Councillor Turnbull, was that a hand? Thanks, Chair. Yes, um, I looked at the, the, the plans of this, the, 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 the actual plan, and my concern was that on the left hand side, it's going well through the 45 degree angle test. Maybe my what I could see in my um, my 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 screen wasn't detailed enough. Are you able to to bring up that? You know, um, I'll have a look at it. Yeah, of course. So did you want me to share the screen again of the um, if, if you can. of the element? It shows, yeah, of course. It shows up. Do you have a. Um, if you look at the uh, is it the middle one? So the middle that's, one that's, here. That's first, yeah. first floor. You've got a ground floor plan. So that, but ground floor you don't take into account 45 degree. It's only at first floor level. Really? So it can go back as far as it wants down the board, down the down yes. the boundary. Yes. It's only at, at, at first floor level that the 45 degree angle comes right. into play. But personally, I don't. I feel well. Ne never mind. If that's if that's the situation, that's the situation. It's just that. There appear, if you look at the side elevation, there's now a very large flank wall going right down opposite the uh, beyond beyond the, the the building line of the property next door. It's my only concern. Well, I mean, we could we can put in some language about subject to no loss of amenities to the neighbouring property, which I think would cover okay. um, would cover that off that, that potentially. Would, that would help. That yeah. Would help. Um, yes. Any just to be clear, so just looking here at policy 72.9, um, it does relate to two storey rear extensions that shall not normally intrude into a 45 degree visibility zone. So it is for just to confirm that it is recorded in the policy document. OK, um, any other comments from councillors on this one? 
Uh, I can't see any. Is there anything I can't see, Heather? No. Okay, perfect. So with the addition of that language about subject to no loss of amenity for neighbouring properties, are we happy with the recommendation? All in favour? Yes, unanimous. Perfect. I've Sorry, made Heather. a note of those changes. Okay. Do you need a moment just to sort papers out? Yeah, sorry, I've just I've got my Grassmere pl uh, plans out just in case I needed to refer to them. So that's no. okay. No right, worries. I, I was aware I went quite quickly at the last bit there. I do apologise okay. for that. It's fine. <laughs> um, five twenty twenty one three zero three one nine Pennycroft. Uh, your observations on this one? course yep yeah. so i'll just get pennycroft up in front of me if i can sorry apologies we seem to have leapt quite far forward on my drawings okay here we go so pennycroft the only change to the already approved scheme is the slight expansion of bedroom number two by the addition of a bay window see highlighted element in presentation so it's essentially this yellow section here um, no other changes are apparent consider no objection Sorry, Matt, you're muted. Sorry, that was that okay. was me, a culpa. Uh, any comments from councillors on this one? I can't see any. Um, in that case, we might just go with the recommendation. All in favour? Yes, agreed. Perfect. I nearly muted myself then again by accident. Um, okay, on to. 5 2021 3133 3, 4 Bamville Wood East Common. Your observations on this one, Heather. Okay, so 4 Bamville Wood. Um, permission has already been granted in 2018 for a very similar scheme in terms of the footprint and design, save for a change to the side elevation from a cat slide roof form towards number 5 Bamville Wood to a full height hipped roof to enable bedroom accommodation and bathroom facilities instead of dressing rooms as in the originally approved scheme. The road is presented in a very open style and set back from the main road of Bamville Wood. The change in roof form does create a more dominant appearance on the plot in comparison to both neighbouring properties, but is presented in a uniform style and does not extend beyond the height of number five of Bamville Wood. The proposal does not appear to be detrimental to the Hottons and Conservation Area, so I say consider no objections sub subject to the appropriate design and use of materials in the Conservation Area Policy 85 of the District Plan first. So this is the oh golly sorry. Um, so this is the said house that's in front of us here, um, and these are the drawings of the um, previously approved schemes. You can. You can see here that we are, oh, they were retaining the cat slide roof design, which is um, similar to the others in the street scene. And this is the new proposal here. So ultimately, the right hand elevation is becoming a much more um, kind of conventional style property um, in roof form. And this here shows the previously approved scheme and the new scheme at the first floor level. So I've highlighted in the yellow the additional element that's been added in this new scheme from what was approved before. Um, and then th this depicts the um, street scenes of the proposed for this time and then above the applicant application that has already been um, approved a couple of years ago. I think that's it, yeah. Thank you, Heather. Any comments from councillors on this one? Councillor Hill would like to speak. Councillor Hill. Yeah, um, thank you. I was just thinking um, uh, it's quite important there that um, it sort of stays open. So I think it's good that um, it's, although it's kind of goes, it goes a little bit higher, it doesn't sort of come out too much more because I mean, that's quite, it, it's pretty much on the common. Yeah, you can walk from there sort of around the golf course. Um, so um, yeah, I, I think it's fine, but um it's you wouldn't want anything much bigger than that, I don't think. Thank you, Councillor Hill. Any other comments from councillors on this one? Um, Councillor Liver would like to speak. Councillor Liver. Um, 
Thank you. I, th I think the following two houses at the moment are, have just been knocked down and are in the process of obviously being rebuilt. Um, and I just wonder if this is going to lead to uh, a selection of houses that are quite spaciously separated, being rather close together. Not, you know, I mean, I just... Thank you. Because I, I walked the dog past there today. So. Thank you, Councillor Liver. Um, Heather, have you got the details of what the, the yes. street scene would look like with the new, the other new application? I was just going to have a little look, actually. I was just going to look at the, the drawings here, because I think that the street scene that they've presented, yes, they have. So the street scene that they have presented actually shows the um, proposal as has been agreed already for okay. the neighbour. So I'll share that with you now so you can see. So actually, they, the neighbour to the right, um the neighbor to the right here is actually retaining that cat slide roof design so this was the proposal that was um it says here that number five was approved under application in 2020 and under construction so this i think is the property that councillor liver was referring to but they are retaining that cat slide slope thank you heather any other comments from councillors on this one? Uh, Councillor Turnbull, I believe, would like to speak. Councillor Turnbull. Oh. I don't know if he's frozen. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah. It's a, it's a big dominant. It's a big dominant building now. And while that may be uh, all right in some of the roads and the around here where I am, the avenues, but on West Common it is supposed to be more open. And I think I tend to agree that maybe we should be slightly concerned. And therefore, I wonder if we could add in some words to the effect: no objections, subject to no 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 no, no impact on the amenities of the area, etc., etc., etc. Something along these lines. So I think that's no adverse effect on the openness yeah. of the street yeah. scene, something yeah. to that effect. Yeah. yeah, yeah, perfect. OK, perfect. We can definitely add that in. Uh, any other comments from councillors on this one? I can't see any. Uh, Councillor Drake and Councillor Farmer, you're off my screen. Oh, and Councillor Paul, if any of you would like to speak, please do share. No, they have not um, indicated that they would like to. OK, perfect. So um, just to recap, so I think the recommendation we're going with is no objection subject to no adverse effect on the um, openness of the street scene and subject to the uh, et cetera, the, the, the subject to that's already in there. Um, yeah. All in favour of that recommendation. Yes, that's agreed. Thank you. Okay, on to 5 2021 3274 at Kingston 1 Netherfield Road. Okay. Your observation, Tim. There we go. Right, okay, so number one, Netherfield Road. Um, fundamentally, there are no changes to the footprint in general design of the proposal, which has already been given permission. A few minor amendments to the positioning of windows in, 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 and internal configuration. The main amendments are the change to materials proposed, which is oak cladding is proposed the front and rear of the property and the garage doors and white render and grey aluminium windows. The road is made up of a small selection of styles and designs of property and is not part of the conservation area. The proposed amendments to the approved scheme appear to be in keeping and not detrimental to the overall street scene. So um, this here shows the, um, the changes in a sense that they're looking to make to the proposal, which is that they're wanting to put um, oak cladding in the um, sections here of the roof form. The garage door is going to be oak clad. Um, as well as there is oak cladding um, between these uh, windows here at the first floor level at the front. And then we've got oak cladding again, pretty much that mirrors the frontage in this section here, and then this lower section just here. Um, and then the sort of 
the greyish sort of all the, the speckled areas are going to be white rendered and the windows are going to be grey aluminium. Um, and this is the said property in question. And that is all of the images that I have. Sorry, I couldn't find my mouse. Um, thank you, Heather. Any other, uh, sorry, any comments from councillors on this one? I can't no. see any. Um, in that case, do we mind just go with the recommendation as set out? All in favour? Yes, agreed. Perfect. Uh, 5-2021-3279 doesn't meet the criteria required for consideration. So on to 5-2021-3282 at 41 Prospect Lane. Your observations on this one. OK, that's fine. Oh, sorry, apologies. Right. So I click the right button to go to the right place. OK, so number 41 Prospect Lane, the property is on a section of private road with a minor curve and backs onto open farmland to the rear. The proposals to the property, although appear many, are relatively modest and in keeping with this already substantial property. There is only a small extension to the footprint at the front of the property to accommodate a utility room and a carport. And then there is the new rear side Stroke, sorry, the, so the new side stroke rear element is to replace the existing conservatory. There appears to be no detriment, detrimental impact on the neighbouring properties from the proposals. There are no additional bedrooms and parking provision is more than ample, no tree works. So you can see here that this is a rather substantial property already, um, which backs onto the open farmland, um, heading out, sort of looking towards Redbourne. So this here is the existing frontage of the the property and then this is the proposed um, frontage so they're looking to demolish this side um, single story element here at the front and replace it with a carport and then this element here I'll show you in the next image extends further back onto the um, rear the, the rear garden um, and then we have a little porch here to the frontage okay and then here you can see to the rear of the property where the conservatory is to be demolished and replaced with this um, more sort of kind of well more open um, open kind of dining dining space um, sort of glass structure um, which you can see here again with the side images goes much higher up in the roof form to create a much more open spacious feel um, and then you can see here the uh, carport to the frontage image again from the opposite side and then this here shows the artist impressions of essentially what it's going to look like um, on the plot thank you heather any comments from councillors on this one no i, I can't see no, any uh, what was the recommendation, sorry? Is there a recommendation, no objection? Oh, apologies, it's on the opposite side. Um, oh, bother, sorry, bear me a second. So I think the recommendation for this, from what I can see here, is just no objection, because it's not part of the conservation area. Thank you. Um, are we happy to go with the recommendation, councillors, all in favour? Yes, agreed. Thank you. On to 5 2021 3212 uh, plot one 40 uh, sorry I can't read plot one 71 Townsend Lane uh, your observations on this one Heather okay so 71 uh, Townsend Lane this plot already has planning permission for the construction of two detached dwellings um, plot one is of this plot one of this approved scheme has already been constructed and is occupied. This application is seeking permission for minor amendments to the already approved outbuilding to, to house a garage, carport, and gym to the side of the newly constructed plot one, with a swimming pool to the rear, and for minor amendment permission to house to house at plot two, which is yet to be constructed. 
The main amendments are the garage on plot one has been set further back from the access to allow for the introduction of a carport. Minor alterations to the design and configuration of the outbuilding. The swimming pool has been set back to allow for the changes to the outbuilding. The design of the dwelling on plot two has been revised to provide a more traditional and aesthetically pleasing appearance. This has resulted in minor enlargements to the first floor and roof. There has also been changes to the two storey side projection and a single storey projection that has been added to the rear elevations. Minor alterations to the elevational treatment and it is noted that the revised dwelling would be positioned on a similar footprint and have a comparable relationship stroke impact with the adjoining properties. And there were removal of several low quality trees, including a small group of non-native cypress. These would be replaced with more substantial specimens to mitigate any potential harm. So the, the amendments proposed differ little from the already approved scheme and do not appear to cause any detrimental impact, detrimental impact on neighbouring properties or on the street scene. Trees are to be removed as part of the proposal, but additional trees and landscaping are proposed across the scheme. Parking provision appears adequate to consider no objection. So you can see here that we've got the proposed street scene at the top here and then below that is the already approved scheme um, for the site. So there isn't really, there isn't a huge difference, just that plot two is becoming a larger property with the reduction of this um, outbuilding here that you can see to the side. So outlined here, you can see the um, the footprint of the existing or the house that was demolished. And then underneath, you can see the footprint of the two dwellings that are to be positioned on the plot. And I think that's it. There weren't any other sort of useful images to to share. With that one. Thank you, Heather. Any comments from councillors on this one? Councillor Turnbull. It may well be that the horse, the stable door is open and the horse is bolted, but when you look at these two houses, to me the two styles look incompatible. You've got one that's, that's is, and I know the house, semi-Georgian in, 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 in the picture, and you've got the one now going next to it. Uh, I don't know whether the existing planning application of the new one is better, but it's it just seems to be out of keeping with its neighbour. That's my only comment. Thank you, Councillor Turnbull. I think they already have planning permission, don't they, for the um, existing... They have, they, for the lower one, they have. They, for the lower one, they yeah. have, I'll give you that. But, 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 yeah, and it also, yeah, anyway, that, that was my comment. Thank you, Councillor Turnbull. Uh, any other comments from councillors on this one? I can't see any. Um, just to ask, Heather, I, as, as I always do when there are trees being removed, are we satisfied that the replacements are adequate? Yeah. Yes, there's there, if anything, they're actually of a um, higher, well, a higher number and they're of an, a more mature um, species as well. Yeah. Always good to hear and see. Um, in that case, are we minded councillors to go with the recommendation as set out? All in favour? Yes, majority agreed. OK, perfect. Um, on to 5-2021-3228 at Holly Lodge, 10 Park Avenue South. Your observations on this one, Heather? Yep, sorry. It helps if I press the right button again. OK, so Holly Lodge, 10 Park Avenue South. Uh, proposed is to demolish the existing detached garage, which you can just about sort of see here hidden behind, and to extend the side at two storey level, partially over the footprint of the demolished garage. The roof height is not increasing, but to accommodate an additional two bedrooms, the bulk and form is increasing. The footprint is significantly increasing, but the plot is substantial and the dwelling is of a modern style with the overall look of the proposal similar to that which is already in the road. The proposed extensions are to be built in the style and materials of the existing dwelling and the proposals appear to have no detriment, detrimental impact on the neighbouring properties which are either a long distance away or have a <coughs> to them. Ample parking provision, no tree works. So you can see here that it is a rather substantial plot um, that it's, it sits on. So you can see here the detached garage next to the um, existing property, the 
its attached garage is going to be demolished um, to accommodate um, this side extension to the property. So this is the um, current street scene or the current sort of frontage of it. And this is what they are looking to propose um, in its stead. Um, so you can see here, let me just do it. Oh, got it. Sorry. Apologies. Go back to that one again. So you can see if I sort of kind of jump between the two that ultimately we've got sort of the everything happening to the left hand side of the property. Um, so you can see here that the um, Oh no, that's the next property, isn't it? Sorry, I was thinking because we've got two applications in Park Avenue South, one after the other. That's the next application. See, that doesn't look right. <laughs> um, yeah, so you can see that the difference is there between the two. Thank you, Heather. I think I saw Councillor Turnbull put his hand up. So if you still like to say something, Councillor Turnbull, the floor is yours. Uh, th thanks. One question, Heather. It intrigued me. What is that box on the side of the if you look at the new front elevation to the right hand side, there's a box or something. Yeah. What, is, what is that? Let me have a little look. A box to the front of the. If you, if you, if you look at the, the front elevation, if you look to the right the hand side where the chimney is, there's sort of a, a, a thing that juts out like a square box. In a moment. Um, right, let me just. Uh, would you mind resharing it, Heather, just so we yes, can? Yes, I was just double checking. I was going to look for myself. So let me just have a little look. I think when you say a box, I think I know what you're meaning. Talking about this here? Yes. That's a porch. Oh, so is it in the side? OK. It okay. is, yeah. It's a porch. I, I, to I the... followed by understood, understood. Yeah, understood. Yeah. Hang on a minute. Let me just be absolutely clear. I'm just going to look. Yes, it's a side porch to the utility in the boot room. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Heather and Nigel. Any other comments from councillors? Yeah, Councillor Hill would like to speak. Councillor um, Hill. Yeah, we, we get a lot on Park Avenue South, Park Avenue North, and um, I mean it's a massive. It's a bit. It's I mean it's hardly an extension. It's almost all, um, it's really increasing the size of the plot. Sorry, the, the building, but it's a it's a massive plot, and there's some huge houses on there. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, that's fine. I think it's just because just the size of the plot helps you. Yeah, I mean, it still it manages to still look small on the on the plot, which is quite an achievement given the scale of the property they're building. Um, any other comments from councillors? Councillor Liver would like to speak. Councillor Liver. Hi, thank you. Um, <clears throat> is this conservation area? It is. Yes. So when it's a conservation area, what are we conserving? So I think the, the thing with this particular property, although the history doesn't go back that far, I think this is, a, this is a modern dwelling. I believe that the original Holly Lodge was demolished and has been replaced with this. So okay. the conservation area obviously has, is a, a very historic area of Harpenden, which back in the day would have been retaining um, the, the old style properties, which is we're quite familiar with as over the course of time have, have changed quite dramatically. Um, mm. So, yeah, it's I suppose the, the question is, is that are we it's in the conservation area, but is it that this particular property has got anything on it that we feel is being lost that warrants being conserved? Um, but mm. looking at it, it's such a modern dwelling and what they're proposing to do matches the modern dwelling. Possibly mm. not, but that's you know that's maybe not for me to to, to judge upon. The committee, no, you know, they have their view. That you have some roads which are predominantly sort of Edwardian houses, and so therefore that's easy to conserve. You can conserve that Edwardian look. In the difference with Park Avenue North and South is you have these big plots, but there's no those age ages of the house is built is varies quite considerably. So although it's a conservation area, I don't know really what we're trying to conserve. Um, other than people are obviously exploiting these enormous plots for 
to build enormous houses. So I, 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 it, it's just with these ones which are in a conservation area. And, and as I say, I'm, I'm, not, I'm never too sure what we're conserving, really, because the same with the ones along Banville Wood as well. Really, I think that's, that's, that's all my point, really, that I'm just just going to make. The thing with the conservation area is it, does, it doesn't always relate necessarily to the actual material dwelling. It can also relate to, you know, the, the trees and the openness. Um, and I mean, certainly I know in Park Avenue, there are a number of, of like property numbers with an A and a B where clearly a plot has been um, utilised to have several property put on it from the original dwelling being demolished. And it also relates to materials being, you know, correct and in keeping as well with the the area. Are they natural, natural materials, or are we moving across to something, you know, UPVC or um, not necessarily quite so in keeping with the open nature of it? Thank you, Heather. I mean, we can add some language in about subject to no detrimental impact on uh, the conservation area. I can't remember quite what the the language we're supposed to use with that one is, but you know what I mean, Heather. Yeah, so it will be no objection so to, um, to appropriate design and use of materials in the conservation area. That's the one. Um, mm. So I think if we add that language in just to make sure, because it is, as has been pointed out, it is quite a substantial um, change to the property. It um, is. Any other comments from councillors? Uh, Councillor Paul would like to speak. <laughs> Councillor yeah, just, Paul. Just go back to policy 85, which is the conservation area. I think the wording is uh, preserve and enhance, which covers more or less, I suspect, putting a bigger building in, but making it a nice one. I mean, I haven't got 85 in front of me, but that, that goes through. That, you know, have a quick, that's the leading, I'm sure it is. Preserve and enhance. When yeah, got, let me just. When you've got interpreted. Right. You know, I'm not criticising, but I, I agree. Nobody puts a smaller house in, they double up the size, don't they? Yeah, so, I mean, essentially 85 covers quite a lot. So we've got the design of the development, so um, the existing building line, the form and density, materials, um, the height, roofscape and the skyline, features, trees, car parking. So it actually covers quite a lot. Um, but it does say, let me just see if there is. So it says here, permission will be granted only where a high standard of design is achieved and the proposal enhances or preserves the appearance of the conservation area. Development must be sympathetic to its surroundings and to the conservation area as a whole. In particular, development must be designed to take account of the following factors, which is what I'd listed previously which is the building line, the form and density, materials, extensions, the height the features, trees, and car parking. Thank you, Heather. Councillor Paul, did you want to add something? Well, I mean, you really see a refusal on the grounds of that, what you've read out in 85. Normally the architect gets it right, more or less, first time. Well, it's there, it's a backup, just to preserve the conservation area. If somebody, if the architect gets out of line, but they, I suspect they don't, so I haven't seen many refusals on purely those grounds mainly on other grounds like parking and trees and all that okay thank you councillor paul any other comments from councillors on this one no not that i can see thank you heather in that case um with the addition of the language about the conservation area are we happy to go with the recommendation all in favor yes all agreed Okay, perfect. So 5 2021 3258 does not meet the criteria required for consideration. So sticking with Park Avenue on to 5 2021 3260 at 42 Park Avenue North. Okay. Your observations on this one, Heather. Okay, so I can now go to 42 Park Avenue. Um so where are we here? So okay, the proposal does not appear to differ materially from the refuse scheme, apart from an agricultural report which de details the tree protection measures and an ecology report have been submitted with the proposal. Therefore, the committee's concerns in relation to the bulk and massing of the left-hand flank wall still remains. I've said consider expressed concern over the bulk and massing of the east 
distant elevation and the possible detrimental impact on number 44 Park Avenue South. It is actually in fact Park Avenue North. So that's straight away a error there on my part. So policy 69, 70 and 85 for the district plan affairs. So um, ultimately nothing as I've advised has actually changed. I've included the images just really for your information, but nothing has changed even to the point where the dates on the applications are exactly the same date as the previous application. But the applicant has on this occasion just provided those two, um, two reports. Thank you. Heather, any comments on this one from councillors? Councillor Farmer would like to speak. Councillor Farmer. Yeah, um, I was just looking to say, I think it says consider express concern. Surely we should be um, going for refusal as the previous reasons for refusal have not been met. I think the previous reasons for refusal were about the tree arboricultural report not being submitted. Um, no, oh, I think. No, but we, but didn't we also have concerns about bulk and massing and scale? The wording from before did just say actually the express concern relating to those did factors. It? Oh, okay. yeah. well, yes, yeah. I see that it did just express concern. Oh, well, in that case. However, since it was refused at district, I'd still go for previous reasons refusal, but whatever, I, I'll go with whatever the committee feel. I I think, uh, Councillor Paul, you've got your hand up. I mean, the district councils didn't reject the bulk and massing, did they? No. So I'm not so sure we can actually put it back in. They just refused it on the fact that there wasn't actually the tree, tree report hadn't been provided to show the mitigating factors on the trees. But you are saying it, aren't you? What's well, that? Is your response. So my yeah my my response removes okay, the element so relating to the trees and just focuses on the the bank. Yeah. Would be to leave it in as a back 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 up. By the way, were we satisfied with the agricultural report? I I I think we were, but I just thought I should check. Um, because there, are there trees being replaced? So in a sense, it, there, were, there were no trees being removed, actually. What they were wanting to, to have was proof that they were going to be putting in some measures to ensure that the existing trees on the site um, were not going to be affected. Um, so they aren't actually removing any trees. That's fine. I, I had a sudden moment where I realised I hadn't actually asked about whether trees were being replaced or not. Um, any other comments from councillors on this one? I can't see any hands. Any hands that I can't no, see? Not that I can see. OK, perfect. In that case, I'd, I'd like to suggest a slight amendment to the wording along the lines of the committee remains concerned about the bulk and massing. Um, just to link through to the previous recommendation. But other than that, yeah. I think um, leaving as is in terms of the, the rest of it. Um, would committee be in favour of that recommendation? All in favour? Yes, all, all yes, yes, all agreed. Perfect. So that concludes item six. So I just need to remember what item seven is called. Give me two seconds. Okay, on to item seven analysis of committee recommendations against SADC determinations. Um, so I mean, I, I think. Broadly speaking, I was quite pleased to see a la relatively large percentage of our um, recommendations are being carried out. Um, certainly felt larger than in previous ones. I must admit I haven't compared um, the two. Uh, Heather, did you have any comments you'd like to make on this one? Um, no, I mean, I kind of really just in a sense, I agree with what you're saying that I think probably in May we can see that there was quite a, a difference, quite a discrepancy um, with, you know, just 69 percent 
um, agreeing with the district council or the district council agreeing with us, whichever way you want to, to term it. Um, the general sort of pattern of the reasons why we differed seems to remain the same. Um, I think um, we seem to be moving away, which is quite nice, I suppose, encouraging, moving away for the reasons why that we differed related to the trees, because actually in previous, the previous report that was submitted, that was certainly a, um, a, an area that seemed to be sort of kind of um, repeating itself quite regularly. Um, yeah, so kind of looking across the reasons why there was a difference, they, they're all very different. They all vary, which is, you know, quite good um in some respects so yeah it, i mean when you see sort of kind of like 86 percent when you realize that actually only two of the two across the whole of the month differed i think we've, we've done relatively well really yeah and um, it was it was 90 percent in the month where we had a lot i mean there were yeah. 30 39 in that month and we only differed with them on four, four. so yeah. i was very pleased with that and I, as, as you say i think it's it's good to see. I mean, I noted with uh, Park Avenue North that it was they refused it on the basis of the of the trees, the fact they hadn't supplied the, the details. So that was yeah. good to see. Um, good progress on on that. Okay. Yeah. Um, interestingly, sort of like there was just only two appeals as well, um, which actually, from what I can see here, we kind of we had a fifty percent. So. One of them was refused in relation to Chelford House, where we actually had no problem. The district council obviously refused it and it was one on appeal. Um, and then the other one for 49 Park Mount, which was obviously where we had no objection. District refused it and it was still refused, dismissed by the, uh, by the uh, uh, what's it called, the inspector. Thank you, Heather. Any councillors want to make any comments on this one? I can't see any. Are there any hands from the people I can't see, Heather? No, no. And, and actually, I don't know if you noticed, I did actually share that report with the wider uh, councillor group in the bulletin as well, because I think the last time when I shared it on the agenda, it was requested that I shared it with the wider councillor group, because I think there are obviously interested district councillors that don't sit on the town council planning committee that would probably be interested in seeing that report. Yes, no, thank you, Heather. And thank you for, um, as ever, for your work in pulling together the um, the analysis. It's uh, it's gratefully appreciated. No, that's uh, fine. It's an interesting exercise. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, I will move on to, so we've done item eight, so I'll move on to item nine, appeals. We haven't got any, um, so that's a very quick one. Uh, preservation order tree works, which are uh, just for noting. Uh, as are the conservation area tree works and technical applications and the list of weekly St Albans District Council decisions. Um, so that case, it just leaves me to say that the next meeting of this committee is held on Tuesday, the 21st of December. Um, power permitting in the yeah. <laughs> council chamber again. Um, and uh, the next meeting of Plans North is on Monday, the 17th of January um, and I'll bring the meeting to a close at 8.34 on my clock. Uh, thank you everyone for coming along and okay. I hope you have a good evening. Thanks everyone. Bye. Okay, bye-bye.